What's up everyone, welcome back. Today we are looking at another Top Fuel model, this time the Top Fuel 8. The 8 series generally is Trek's highest end aluminum model. With this year they have made a few changes, one being the introduction of the Roscoe 9, the first 9 series non-carbon model. And now the 9.7s are becoming a higher part spec than they ever have before. The Top Fuel 8 is still their speedy cross-country bike which is also now a down-country bike with the new geometry and suspension setup. They've got a newer seat post to it so it's going to that bigger 34.9 and it's going to have a lot more stiffness in that dropper post especially. It's going to handle a lot better. Overall excellent bike. But is the 8 now the best bike you can buy from them? The Top Fuel 8? Is it the one you should go for? Or should you look at something like the 9.7 or drop down a little and go for a little more budget? Overall, the Top Fuel 8 is specced extremely well. Trek has done a really good job with this, and I think it probably is still king of the value. Overall, it has a 120mm travel as with all the Top Fuels, and it has a RockShox SID front fork. And they pair that up with a RockShox Deluxe Ultimate RCT which is a very impressive rear shock, I have to say. It does come with a Shimano XT drivetrain, so this is going to shift superbly. Dior already shifts really well. XT shifts like a race bike, except it weighs a little bit more. And honestly, I don't think it weighs that much. If you went to an XTR setup full wireless, or the way they're doing it now, half-wired, as well as all the upgrades, you're going to save a good couple pounds on the bike. But overall, a Shimano XC drivetrain is going to shift superbly fast. It's very responsive. Short throws on the shifting units, which is really, really nice. If you haven't used it compared to any um, GX or SRAM setup, SRAM has a lot more follow-through, a lot more of a push to it. And Shimano has a lot faster of a switch to it. It is more like the click of a mouth as mouse, not mouth, click of a mouse as opposed to the push of a button I guess. It's hard to explain but it, it's much faster feeling a little more snappy, more responsive and it will be even more so than the Dior setup. It does have four piston brakes. Now these aren't the highest end ones out there but they are going to get you stopped significantly faster. I mean we're not talking about entry level bikes at this point. This one's coming in where are we at for 48.30 Canadian dollars so it's getting up there in price. You're nearly a $5,000 bike and it's got to have four piston brakes so that it's just unusual in top fuel line and those higher end kind of cross-country race bikes to have four piston generally they're sticking with the dual piston because that's all you need it still stops you well but four piston for the heavier descents and longer descents you'll get less brake fade and more braking power overall and you're going to really appreciate that Big change up is the wheels, and these ones come with the comp line, and that is going to be a really nice wheel. They are the 30s this year, so a bit wider setup, and they're going to be able to take in a really big, beefy tire. They have stocked this bike overall with a wider tire than they ever have before, and that's going to give you way more traction than before, and it's easy to switch those tires out to something a little less intense if you were doing a bit more of a cross-country cross kind of a ride. So the Top Fuel 8 has always been one of their top level race bikes yeah. and now with the new geometry it still is but it's kind of pre-set up out of the box to be a little more trail ready, fun ready. Overall I think with a switch of tires you'll be able to roll a lot faster and become an XC race machine still. It still has that really good setup of suspension. The SID stuff works really well and is very lightweight for what it is. Like, if you went with any other brand or setup, it's going to add a good chunk of weight to it. The SID setup is really well done. Overall, you're still getting Boost 148, Mino Link to flip it up and down and change your geometry around. And that's what it's all about. It really works well. That RCT Ultimate rear shock is a big shock in my mind. Ultimate is obviously RockShox's top-of-the-line model, so you are getting a very significant upgrade in the rear shock here. They continue this throughout the entire lineup, and it's honestly a really well-performing shock. You're not going to get much better than this. 
Overall, you can put a 130 mil fork in there, so that would give you a little bit more beefiness if you wanted to do a little bigger, but I think it would be a weird change on the top fuel now. They're already stretching to become what they are, that downcountry terrain bike, and overall, I think you'd be wiser to just leave this as it is and skip that 130 mil range and go all the way to a, to a fuel EX model as opposed to the top fuel model. They do come tubeless ready, so that's another savings you get. The big downside to the wheels, and it's not a huge downside, but for a top fuel 8 and a nearly $5,000 price tag, they only come with the Rapid Drive 54 tooth setup. So this could be increased to the 108 with an additional cost. It's a very small upgrade, but it will give you more contact points and allow that wheel to just be engaged instantaneously as opposed to a very, very minor amount of drag. I mean, it's really not that noticeable until you compare them side by side, but it's still, you know, it's something to consider when buying a bike this expensive. The tire setup are fantastic. They are the XR4s, so they're a beefy tire for what this bike is, but everyone's looking for beefy. They'd rather a more forgiving tire out of the box and something you'll be able to handle really, really well compared to a racy bike tire, which is what they used to come with. They used to come with like XR1s, XR2s, and slowly they've got bigger and bigger and bigger until now we're at the XR4 and the Fuel X series are on the XR5s. They are 120 TPI, 2.4 inch wide, so they work really well. And it's going to be something you can choose to keep on or go to a faster rolling tire if you are looking for more XC Racer. Overall, you can fit a 2.5 inch tire on there, so you will be able to put something really beefy up front if, again, you're doing more downhill stuff. But you don't want to go too aggressive because overall you're just going to end up looking like you're trying to be a Fuel EX yet not have the travel or slackness for it. What I do like about this is they've switched to that threaded external bottom bracket. It's going to make easier maintenance, cheaper I think a little bit. It's just going to be a lot less headaches. The cassette and the chain are just the SLX setup, which I don't know, it doesn't really make much difference. The XC and SLX stuff is so close, it's kind of this weird line. All we know is it's not as lightweight as the XTR and SLX may wear a little bit faster, but it's not a huge difference. Cool thing I do like about this bike, which is really excellent, is the max chainring size is a 36. So they've put huge clearances on here to allow you to make this a fast, fast bike. Overall, you'll be able to really crank out those kilometers if you're doing a lot of stuff like that. Most of the time, we're lucky to get like a 34 tooth as a max. A 36 will really make this a capable off-road, like gravel grinding or really high-speed trail bike. Obviously, for some people, that's going to be a pretty hefty ring to push up some steep hills and such. But it's going to be a fast setup. It's really a cool little addition they've got on there to allow this big of a clearance. In conclusion, overall, the Top Fuel 8 still holds true to its great, great value. With that suspension setup, which is kind of ridiculous, you're going to have a really high-performing bike on the trails. The control through it is going to work really well. Your shifting is top-notch, and with very small upgrades, you can make it insane, essentially, going to a full XT drivetrain once this stuff wears out. The brakes are really good performance out of them. And the wheels are really good, and obviously with that teeny bit of an upgrade again, you can make even better engagement points and make it a really capable bike. For very small upgrades, you could make this that much faster of a bike. But how it comes is really well stocked, and you don't need to change a thing for anyone who just wants to do everything with it. It gives you the opening to become a race bike, but doesn't give you everything you need, and that, I think, is kind of a nice thing. It's priced pretty well, and it is going to be a bike for everyone, and then with a few minor tweaks, without investing thousands more, even hundreds more, without investing a lot more, you're going to have a much faster bike if you lean towards that racing scene, or potentially you could make it a little more downhill ready, but honestly, I'd strongly suggest looking at the Fuel X line if that's the case. 
that's just where the natural progression has to push you. If you're looking for faster downhills, just go fuel the X. And then if you're looking for a fast XC bike, the top fuel can become one very, very easily. All right, guys, hopefully this helps you out with a bit of decisions. Good luck out there. My name's Chris, and please subscribe and comment below.